represents our brand are represented um to study all these representation we need to to study the values of those brands and we can study those values through all their practices and here we can see their practices as controllable but also the practices of all the stakeholders and here we can put also the semi controllable practices and non controllable practices here we uh, decided to study um, a facebook post from Nestlé from the portuguese page the reaction of the internet users and the brand response to some of those comments to understand how the brand represents itself and how it is represented in terms of its environmental responsibility. So we want to um, answer to two questions. The first one is how the brand is represented in terms of its environmental responsibility. And the second one is how does the brand respond to attacks on its legitimacy? So um, we choose we choose this brand because um, in the last years in Portugal it has uh, it is one of the brand with the best reputation and emotional relationship index by Global Rep Score T T M. We follow, of course, SFEL and also some principles of the CDA, critical discourse analysis, in terms of the discursive practices, conditions of production and reception of texts. And also the situational theory of crisis communication that established the relationship between a crisis, uh, a crisis responsibility and the organizational reputation from thematic comms. Uh, in the basis of all, all our theoretical framework, uh, we, we, we defend that this course uh, is a language as a social practice, and so it is always understood in a constant dialectic between discourse, society, and uh, culture, and this can allow us to, to analyze how changes in discursive practices can cause changes in terms of social, society, and cultural, the, all the culture in society, or vice, vice versa. Um, our analytical tools, so transitivity systems, so processes, participants involved in them, and the circumstances in which they take place. So we choose uh, transitivity because we want to analyze how reality is constructed or reconstructed through ways of meanings that depends on the subject positions, but also as well as other determination as social or economic determination that will contextualize all the practices. And as the other analytical tool is the response strategies of the situational theory of crisis communication in terms of what is a primary response that can be denied, diminished, rebuilt, or as secondary responses, bolstering, that is from no attribution at all of responsibility to total responsibility um, from the, the, the organization, in this case, the brand. So next, I will show you the post that uh, the brand published in Facebook. Um, it has a small video in 10 seconds. And in the right side, we, we have uh, translated all the, the verbal texts. So, as I said, it's a really small uh, video, 
we have the text, the first text is the text that is uh, posted uh, in the top. So uh, it is our translation. So at last we are prioritizing means of impactful on the environment, such as maritime transports, but also railways and gas powered trucks, the use of which we intend to increase in 30% by the end of 2001. Then in the video, uh, as you have seen, we have the carrier ship sailing, the music and the verbal text that we have translated here. So over the last three years, we have been working to improve the environmental efficiency on all of our operations. And the second sentence, we are leading the use of multimodal transport, prioritizing means of transport with the least impact on the environment. And then the, the, the reaction of internet users. And next we brought the first three comments in response to that post. So the first one is a comment from a, a brand believer. The second one is a brand critic, and the third po the third comment is the response of the brand to the second comment, so the critic comment. So what we can see here. So good morning. We are really in need of uh, companies like yours to make our world better for the future of young people. Then the the critic comment the company that wants to privatize water will take care of the young people's future did you know that nestle wanted to privatize any water source in the planet and then we have the brand response hello thank you for your concern on this matter nestle believes that the access to water is a basic human right the comment that you indicate refers to the documentary we feed the world realized in 2005 whose video interview is an excerpt that was and was taken out of context, thus distorting this vision of our previous chairman. What our previous chairman said repeatedly was that everyone has the right to clean water to meet their basic hygiene and hydration needs. Please see this interview at and the qualification on this topic. Thank you. So... In general, in our analysis, we can see that brand represents itself verbally as responsible actor, sensor for environmental issues through material and mental processes with a special emphasis on circumstantial elements. So we have circumstances of location, time, place, manner, means, quality, extent, and frequency cause as a reason, purpose, behalf, and extending accompaniment. So uh, we didn't uh, uh, make a visual analysis, but we can see that in the video, there is a complement of the creation of meanings in terms of what uh, we can call of intersemiotic relations. In terms of the discourse production conditions, we can uh, see different voices of authority. So the previous chairman, the actual the director, um, but we can also think about who has the discursive power uh, in, in uh, digital media. Uh, so we have the controllable practices, but we can also have some non-controllable practices or semi-controllable practices. About the discourse reception, um, we know that it is, uh, so we are talking about Facebook. So we are talking about likes, likes shares, comments. Um, an interesting work that we didn't uh, do, but it can be done in the future is what is effectively the engagement rate in terms of comments likes and shares. Um, we know that there is a reduced number of comments, 42 in the total, and the, uh, then we have more critics than the positive comments. 
uh, usually the, those positive comments are mainly in short sentence. And it is also our question, and even from human being, what motivates consumers to comment the brand publications? So um, here, in this case, brand does not assume any responsibility about the online accusations, and it is always remembering uh, good practices. Um, from brand believers discourse, the, the repetition is about good practicing practices, looking to the future in short sentences. Like we are really in need of companies like yours to make uh, our world better for the future of young people, like the first one. From brand critics discourse, um, the content is pollution, but also other crises from the past or other problems. So, and those accusations are made with negative criticism, direct sentences, irony, questions and legal argumentation, mainly about pollution. So this, this content, maritime transport, but also other problems, mainly water privatization. So consumers don't forget, even if it is a fake news, because some comments uh, are about this, this content, what are privatization, but this problem, this crisis is about when, um, sent, so when interview from the previous chairman in 2005. And so it is um, an information that in 2016 and 2020 is repeatedly brought uh, into the present, even if, if it was um explained that what chairman said was not uh, this uh, position about the privatization of water um also we have some accusations because uh, the brand does not answer to critical comments but it is also criticizes because it does answer to comments because if it do if it if it um, do it it is because it uh, the brand have a has a heavy conscience. Um, what about uh, brand response? We have brand response to brand believers and brand response to brand critics. So, in terms of the brand response to brand believers, we have two structures. So. The first one is salutation and acknowledgement and explanation. The second one is the same for the two first topics, salutation, acknowledgement, and then more information. But in fact, explanation and more information are both about uh, remembering uh, people about the good actions uh, of the brand. So. It is what we can uh, uh, define as a secondary response strategy of the situational theory of, of crisis in terms of what it is considered reinforcing. In terms of the transitivity, um, the brand represents itself as a sensor with a cognition mental process. So. It is always about believing, so the power of, of believing in the future. Uh, that is complemented with the circumstances of manner, quality, and cause. What about brand response to brand critics? It is um, a different response uh, that has as the the other uh, response salutation and acknowledgement but then we have refutation explanation commitment and more information and here the refutation is what um, is used as a response strategy to identify that there isn't any attribution of responsibility from the brand so that is the denial and also the victim cluster. So an external agent that wants to cause damage to the brand. And that was the, the, 
uh, team of uh, the privatization, privatization of water. In terms of transitivity system, um, the brand represents itself mainly as actor and sensor, as actor with material process um, to uh, explain that uh, its actions doesn't uh, are, are always good practices and mental, mental process always in terms of cognition, so believing once again. Uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, its representation as a sire, it is always when we have an authority voice, the chairman, the director, uh, said. And once again, the power of the circumstances that are very important because they um, allow to uh, have um, an emphasis in all what um, what the brand defends. So circumstances of manner, cause, location, extent. So first of all, uh, in general terms, we can say that communication as an action that relates to construction, maintenance, defense, reconstruction of the brand reputation is central to the relationship between brands and stakeholders. Brands need to prove constantly uh, their credibility to gain or to maintain uh, the consumer's trust with its actions and DOE also include discourse. In this case, in, in this case, in this uh, post, Nestle demonstrated commitment through its publication and showing other practices. Uh, the reduction of pollution is consistent with what legally uh, it is demanded, so with the European and international standards and rules. Then we have the social judgment. So we know that ships are responsible for 13.5% of gas emissions in the European Union. This brand does not commit to eliminate pollution, but to reduce it. So we are talking about different, um, different actions. With this theoretical framework and analytical tools, we can say that brands are dynamic entities. There are different actors that constantly interact, build, can denigrate, reconstruct um, their identities uh, and reputation through the discourse. Uh, Nestle has uh, a long uh, history of um, communication crisis. So here, Nestle represents itself as a dynamic, as an actor, and reflexive agent, as a sensor with the cognition and thought process. Temporality and manner are two important circumstantial strategies from the past we have been working to the present. We are prioritizing so a continuity that is always stated with projection to future. Also, what brand will improve, showing how it will be through circumstances. Silence is not an option in our digital society. So this brand uses constant reinforcement in all comments positive and negative uh, comments. Uh, regarding uh, the number of brand followers on this Facebook page, the number of negative comments is very low. And it is uh, what uh, Combs argues that if there is a favorable reputation, negative information is in general ignored by stakeholders. But we also know that small comments can change the world in a um, few hours. So thank you for listening us. And we, we finished our presentation. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Goretta and uh, Neva, for, your, for presenting your work on the way framed. Uh, Introduce their um, um, contact and um, communicate with the, the audiences on the Facebook post. Uh, our participant, do you have any question for the presenter? Please 
You can either send a message or talk directly. Yes, we have one. Uh, Ian. Yes, Ian. Morning. Uh, well, it's morning where I am. Um, so thank you very much for that talk. Um, I enjoyed it very much. I was just looking at um, Nestle's reaction to um, those posts and thinking how full they are of interpersonal meanings, um, the salutations, yeah. um, and there's um, obviously the constant buffering up of the brand and um, sort of very careful attention being posed to politeness there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I wondered if you had any plan to go on and um, analyze the interpersonal meanings um, in posts like this, maybe in future. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, in the beginning, we have thought just about representation, transitivity system. But then when we were all analyzing uh, the, those comments, um, we thought about it, so we couldn't do it uh, for now. And also not the interpersonal meaning, right? But also the appraisal um, evaluation because we have a lot of um, appraisal. So it's, uh, it's calling us uh that that i think it, it can be uh, it will be a, a, another another um, research um mainly because we have uh, a lot of irony from uh, internet users a lot of irony and so we need to understand all the contexts um even our our social context um because what we have seen is that um we have we are constantly, this is a brand that has constantly some crisis. Um, but um, what, what we have seen is that those internet users are always picking uh, one to crisis and they are repeatedly doing it. So um, uh, yes, thank you. We, we, ha we have thought about it and it is, uh, I think it's, it's the, the next, Step for our research. Yes, thank you, Ian. So, do we have any other question for our presenter? So, while waiting for other participants' uh, question, I am in particularly interested in uh, you know, exploring the differences of the way the brand uh, presenting on Facebook with the community with different communities as we know that is interesting that international brands like coca-cola and, and so for different community different culture they have different way to represent the same meaning so how would it be different when they pass on different community in vietnam for example and in australia or in the portuguese and other community yeah yeah, um, but here you are talking about um, our brand. No. Exactly. Yes, because the information that is uh, even in not only in Facebook, but also in the internet page, yeah. the information is not the same. Yeah. yeah. So some years ago, uh, we have done a, a small research about also about Nestle. But uh, and it was about the, the oil palm crisis, and the information that we had in Portuguese um, internet page was not was that in other countries, yes. and that's why we say that specifically what I was saying uh, about these those communities. So what has impact here has not impact in another uh, culture in another country. So, um, and it was interesting to see that in some countries, um, for instance, uh, the oil palm uh, crisis had an, uh, an, a different impact that it has, that was not here in, in Portugal. So we heard about it, okay? But it wasn't the same. For instance, this question of water privatization um it was also about brazil and in brazil it had another impact 
because even if it, if it was a fake news or not, we don't know, um, you know, we didn't hear about it uh, a lot, but it was in those comments. So someone talked about it. And so someone had done some research about it. So mm -hmm. yes, it exactly, it's the context that we are here also, uh, we have to study it also, yes. Yes, yes that would be very interesting. Thank you very yeah. much. So sure. we have any other question to discuss with our presenter? Other participant. So if, uh, if not, we will uh, thank you very much uh, to you both for your work. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. And we will move to our second uh, presentation today uh, with uh, the work uh, of uh, identity construction through emojis on Chinese social media. A system system functional capacity by Zhang He from the uh, Ximei University, Ximei, China. So, uh, are you here with us? Yes, here yes, I yes. am. Yes. yes, hello. Hey. So, so now you Please can share your just screen and start your Bye. presentation. Yes. Okay. Can everybody see my slides? Yes, I can see the the, the PowerPoint slides. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Jen He from Jimmy University, China. Today, I'm going to talk about my recent research. Uh, the title is Identity Construction Through Emojis on Chinese Social Media, a Systemic Functional Perspective. All right, okay, why emoji use? Uh, emojis are very unique and popular meaning-making resources in the digital communication. According to Van Leeuwen, 2020, emojis are formed by the mouth, eyebrows, and the wrinkles in drawings. They do not necessarily reproduce real-life facial expressions, and they may begin to form new vocabularies of victors that need to be understood on the basis of attributes such as their extent, directionality, and conspicuousness rather than in terms of Darwinian basic emotions. So they have more functions or meanings other than showing the face of anger, happiness, or sad, sadness. But when it comes to facial effect, Emotional emojis are likely to be read differently in different cultural contexts, such as you guys ha have mentioned just now. Uh, and the interpretation needs ideational support. For example, the emoji with tears of joy could be understood differently among people of a different age, gender, and nationality. So why emoji use on social media? Okay, the platform of social media is viewed as a social need and the public utility where every user participates, evaluates, and interacts by using language, punctuations, emotions, and other semiotical resources. There is, of course, a growing demand for emojis to present emotions in act relationships and construct identities, especially for young people. For example, uh, in China, uh, Weibo, the Chinese Twitter, WeChat, the Chinese Facebook, Douyin, the Chinese uh, TikTok, Bilibili, the Chinese YouTube, are very popular among young people. Okay, let me show you how news are read on our Chinese social media. Here is the snapshot of the top search lists on Weibo on the day of 9th, November 2023. As you can see, those news are arranged according to the number of reads. And, and the first, for example, the first news about the accident of uh, the internet are celebrities. Uh, they receive, it received uh, 5,990,000 uh, views. 
if I click any click on any of the news titles, suppose I click on the second most read news on this top lists, I can get the news post. Okay, like this. Of course, they are all in Chinese. And at the bottom of the news post, we have the number of reposts, the number of comments, and the number of likes. Okay, if I click on the number of comments, I will get 3,551 pieces of comments. As you can see, among the top nine, okay, they of course are ranged according to the number of likes. As you can see, uh, nearly half of the top nine comments use emojis, at least one emoji. So we need emojis. We like emojis. Okay, this study adopts a systematic functional perspective because, okay, as many making resources, both language and uh, emoji are used to construe an entity or event about the world ideationally, in act social relationships interpersonally, and organize a unit textually. And this systemic functional semantic perspective facilitates the application of linguistically rooted theories, the above mentioned three metafunctions, into the exploration of emojis meaning and function. In my previous research on emoji use, uh, in, re in relation to the news comments on Chinese social media, I have found that uh, most of the Weibo users interpret the meanings or functions of emoji differently from their original design. For example, uh, the dog face emoji, dodge, uh, which is usually in most case cases used to single low, friendless for triggering negative appraisal, irony, or human, or, or, or human. And uh, if they are combined with language, Chinese characters, the interpersonal functions of emoji are construing attitude in different ways of combining, or signaling friendless, or both. Uh, but I was wondering the relationship between the emoji and the emoji users apart from this interper interpersonal emojis. So I turn to identity construction. Okay, here are a number of research papers on the multisemiotic construction of interpersonal relationships and the social identities through language, body language, food, and body comms. So can social media users' identities be forged through emoji? If yes, in what ways? Okay, the very important key concept about identity, refer to referring to who we are, depend on the roles we play in a given situation, as you can see, uh, the construction of identities are close is closely related to the three meta functions of language and Im image. But this paper, this research is focused on the ideational and the interpersonal dim dimensions, particularly the inter and intercouplings of emotion with ideation within the emoji and across emoji and a test. Okay. Uh, the appraisal framework is used to interpret to what degree feelings and the evaluations are lended with emoji. So I'm going to use the subcategories of appraisal, uh, attitude and graduation. So this research uh, centers on the phenomenon of Tiaoxiu in China. Okay, Tiaoxiu refers to a national policy of changing one's shift to get a live later. Okay, here is the original news post uh, issued by the National Government uh, uh, Bureau. Okay, on the 
5th December 2023, the State Department of China issued the 2024 Arrangement of National Holidays, among which the eight-day Tiaoshu of Spring Festival was widely discussed, and the topic of Tiaoshu was pushed to the hot search on Weibo. Okay, according to the official announcement, people will take eight days off from the 10th February to the 17th February, but they need to compensate the, the, the 4th February and the 18th February, before and after the holiday. I know it is very complicated, but please follow me on this. Okay, the statutory holidays of Spring Festival, which is the most important holiday for our Chinese, are from the 10th February to the 12th February 2024. So we'll have only three days off. Okay, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th. But in order to give people a longer duration of days for people to uh, get, uh, re re unite with their family members or to have a long distance, tra long distance travel, the government decided to shift the four weekdays here from the 13th to the 16th to the Saturdays and Sundays before and after the holiday week. So we get eight days leave from the 10th February to the 17th February in a succession. But the problem is, the problems are, there are two problems. Okay, first, the day before the holiday week is the Lunar New Year's Eve, which is very important for Chinese people. Uh, the, uh, similar to the Christmas Eve, for people to gather together with their families to celebrate and welcome the coming of the new year. But you can, can you, you can see, people have to work on this day, the 9th February 2024, which is not included in this long holiday. And the second problem is in order to compensate the four work days, people have to work on two Sundays before, before and after the holiday week. So people complain. Okay, so uh, by searching the top topic of Tiaoshu on Weibo, a total of 106 verbal visual posts were collected for analysis. The current study is mainly focused on face emoji. So here's the first one, angry face. Here are the two examples. Okay, really very hates Tiaoshu, angry face. Just take the days off. Still play Tiaoshu, it feels really very bad to work or study in a row after the holiday. Angry face. So visually, we have the intermodal coupling of angry face emoji with negative affect. Verbally, we have the intermodal uh, coupling of language expressions such as really very hates negative one. Okay, play. Evoke the negativeness, uh, ne negative meaning, but with negative affect and graduation. So we have the intermodal coupling of visual verbal ideation with negative emotion in a concordant way. So the identity of non emotion sharing is directly established through the emoji in the concordant coupling of angry face emoji and the negative test with negative fact, affect in this post. In other words, the emoji is used to, to construe the common commenters feelings or emotions directly. Here are more examples of the identity of emotion sharing. Okay, here, here in this one, each of the seven day, uh, seven work days seems like a year. Okay, this, uh, Emoji of tears is employed by the uh, Weibo user to share his or her uh, sadness uh, with other users to complain about the compensation of working days, seven days. And the second one, okay, the holidays ends, okay, return with this very 
throw it in up uh, emoji face. Okay, this uh emoji is used uh for the sorry. Okay, this uh emoji is used to embody the commenters uh sadness or depressed feelings about when they return from the holidays. They have to work for seven days. Okay, second is a uh, dodge, the uh, face talk emoji. Okay, here are three, two examples. Okay, everyone feels Tiaoshu is oppression. Actually, we have, we have, we are, we all misunderstood, understand the policymakers painstaking to encourage us to be a freelancer who doesn't care about holidays and didn't work in the office. Okay, dog face. Have to say the Tiaoshu policymakers are all talented indeed. So you can say all these two examples, uh, their targets are the Tiaoshu policymakers. So verbally in these two uh, posts, the public's complaint of Tiaoshu as operation is interpreted as the policymakers' positive behavior, such as painstaking, encourage, and talented. If we don't consider the existence of this funny face dog emoji. But with this emoji, the similarly positive judgment towards the policymaker is turned over by the dog face with as you can see, the slanted eyes playing the role of irony activator. In other words, this emoji functions as the visual activator or to activate the irony, ironic meaning in the verbal expressions. Okay, here are, okay, here are the third types of uh, emojis. Okay, smiley face, very positive emoji, but in these two examples, they turn to the other side of emotion. Okay, the first one, very good. We'll have a stream of working people on the way home on the day of spring festival. Okay, second one, we'll be, by, I'll explain this later, by taking one more day off. Okay, actually in the first example, there are a contradiction between the positive appreciation, good, with the later complaints about people uh, have to work on the day before the spring festival, uh, which means they have to work on the spring festival eve. Okay, the second one, okay, will be, okay uh, in the pronunciation in Chinese means dead. So this is Verbal expression also is also used to express uh, the complaint about why people have to work on Supreme Festival Eve. Why not just one more day off? So this inconsistent coupling of language forms with emotions in the first example, and the evoked emotion in the second example reveal the negative attitude behind a smiley face. Okay, they just function as an anti-emoticon. They, they are embedded with the opposite feelings or emotions under this smiling face. Okay, here are more examples. Like, I don't understand what will result from one more day off. Smiling, bye-bye. Okay, good for serving the people. Very cute smiling. So there are more to explore in this data, like really don't uh, don't know why operate like this with an emoji uh, of smiling and crying face. And then like this one, how is everyone arranging your heart at the time? It's a very depressed dog face, little dog. So a very brief uh, conclusion. So in terms of reactions to governance, it is not simply about hate speech and sports speech for doing a analysis in the Chinese social media context. In the study of the public discussions about Tiaoshu, some value positions are affirmed in the posts 
directly, while others become complicated there with web web users' different identities attached to emojis, and uh, uh, due to the fragmented, loose, and spoken features of social media communication, the interpretation of emoji meaning is challenging, very challenging. More challenging is the large data, which contains a number of emojis with different interpretations, which, lead in, which leads to another problem, uh, visual patterns, okay? They don't like linguistic patterns can be uh, uh, approached through linguistic uh, tools. There seems no such tools for emoji analysis because the uh, very subjective interpretations for both the readers and the users on social media. So uh, here's part of the references. And thank you all for your attention. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Comments or uh, suggestions are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John Hu, for your interesting presentation on Chinese people use of uh, so emoji on on a kind of Facebook, but in China, right? This for yes, this is media. a Chinese Twitter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Chinese Twitter. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, the way people Thank use it to represent their internal state of mind. Yes. So, yes. Uh, participants, do you have anything to uh, comments or feedback and or any question to our presenter? Please feel free. Yes, we have one presentation. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Uh, thank I you. Was, uh, I was I was thinking about uh, we have different culture. It's real. Uh, it, it's true. But uh, about emojis, I think that we are human beings and we are always thinking about the same. That is. Yes. Um, I think that not in this context of news, but even in general, I think that mm -hmm. we are hiding real intentions through the use of emojis. So I can I can send you an email uh, yes, with, thank you. with a, a, a demand and order that okay. is not uh, a, a, a good uh, good uh, good order. Can we say? But if I put an emoji with a smile. Uh, people w won't be able to be angry with me, can I say? Mm -hmm. So okay. it is, uh, uh, how can I say, in terms of intersemiotic relations, mm -hmm. it's not a compliment. It's, it can be contradictory, as you, you have yes. showed us, but yes. it is also a, another situation that is, uh, I'm, I'm doing, uh, I have a purpose, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's not a compliment. It's not contradictory. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, it's like manipulating. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. Um, it was. It just just a, a comment about what what you were presenting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Totally agree. Yes. Emojis are manipulated. Yes. In one way or another. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. so something like universal uh, tools for people to express their emotion, but maybe to yeah. in different cultures. That's interesting yes. to explore. Yeah. Yes, of course. So, do we have any further questions or any point to discuss with our presenter? Okay. We can contact our presenter later if you have any other further points to discuss. So thank you very much, uh, John. Huh? Right? Yes. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the hosting. So yes. So now we move to our her presenter today in a discussion with the uh, the paper on uh, let me see on the gut self death screen. 
an examination of the re representation of Queen Elizabeth II in Guardian newspapers by uh, Dr. Kinsley Shirin Mintak from University of Ghana, Lagom, uh, Ghana. Are you here with us? Yes, yes. Okay, we can see the PowerPoint slide now. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I trust you can hear me loud and clear. I can hear you and can see just right now. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, greetings to everyone. It is <laughs> dawn here, so pardon, pardon my voice if I sound a bit coarse. So um, I'm presenting on God Save the Queen. It's targeted at evaluating the attitude of Ghanaians on the death and burial of Queen Elizabeth, um, situating it in the discourse of um, anti-colonialism sentiments that were experienced in Africa for some time now. So. Um, for the past five to six and um, five years, um, Africa has experienced six, actually six coups. And these have been assigned not only to bad governance, insecurity and corruption, but also due to anti-imperial sentiments. And largely this has been found in the Francophone countries in Africa, but, um, including Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Sudan, and Niger. But in, in the colonization of Africa, France and Britain had the largest of the share. And, and research has indicated that the disparity in the way um, anti-imperial sentiments are expressed across these regions, those colonized by Britain and those colonized by the uh, by French or France. Largely, the anti-imperial sentiments have been expressed in the form of humanist anti-colonialism, where the focus is on the mistreatment of indigents and their call for respect of such persons. And Sometimes they've been expressed in the form of economic anti-colonialism and cultural anti-colonialism. In the case of the cultural anti-colonialism, which is meant to articulate the abandonment of, of the imperial culture for the native cultures. And in the case of the Francophone countries in Africa, um, all these usually transpire. But in the Anglophone countries, it's usually um, cultural anti-colonialism um, resistance movements that have been established in the literature. Now, Ghana, in the case in the case of Ghana, Ghana shares a long history with Britain, and because this was once a colony of Britain, and and so this research was born out of the need to find out or explore how the recent wave of anti-colonialism sentiments in, across African countries seems to be grounded in the case of the Anglophone country like Ghana. And in this case, the study is conducted through reports on the death and burial of Queen Elizabeth. So to share with you a little history about Ghana and UK or Britain, which I, I think I've said in my earlier comments, Ghana was a colony of um, Britain and it remained for a longer time, but it was also the first um, sub-Saharan African country to attain its independence. And so the issue of resistance and anti-colonial sentiments being expressed in our context is fairly known because Ghana seemed to have championed the Pan-African agenda and during the reign of Britain in Ghana, there were a lot of resistance and anti-imperial sentiments expressed across um, various ethnic groups 
But after our independence, we seem to have shared lot of economic relations which were very positive, but the frequent cultural tensions and criticism of the British um, monarch seem to exist in our space. Now, the media is also one that we can say it's a, a colonial heritage because it was created, largely introduced or created by the British administration. And its its main goal was to serve as a tool of propaganda for the um, colonial authority. Now, they established the first newspaper outlet in Ghana um, called the Royal Gold Coast Gazette. But with time, the indigenous and the Pan-Africanist movement established alternative voices by establishing other media organizations to counter the colonial propaganda. And this feature of countering and resistance and Pan-Africanism and nationalism seem to have characterized our media till present. And now we can say that there's no mediatization of the British influence of our media and that allows for our media to frequently and freely critique the British relations with Ghana. Because the, the data uh, for the study surrounds death and burial of the queen, I decided to discuss some few issues of um, death and burial in the Ghanaian context. So like many, traditions, African traditions, we have a very vibrant funeral and death traditions. We usually do very elaborate, colorful funerals filled with lots of cultural practices. And sometimes we say that if you want to have an understanding of the African or the Ghanaian concept of life, you, you should see or visit our funerals. We, we usually have very elaborate rituals with these times, like as you can see here, we, we even do fantasy coffins and coffins that represent some a person's profession or sometimes a person's status. And death is thought of, or the whole process of the death and burial is considered as a process, which may, which starts from the very first day and may travel sometimes a year or two. funerals could last for the whole day between the death and burial process could last for even a year, sometimes a month, sometimes several months. It's only some few traditions that do just a day or two, but those are usually the um, religious based ones. But if you come to that uh, pure traditions, we like to do elaborate rituals around it. I think partly is influenced by a concept that death is a transition process that ushers us into the afterlife, like what many cultures also believe, but we seem to use the funeral to mourn. Death is meant for mourning, but the funeral is a celebration. That's And, and these, what transpires, the processes or the rituals that are associated with the whole whole death and burial concept is contingent on the nature of the dying and which so we have a concept of a good death and a bad death and sometimes to the status of an individual determines what transpires the age among others and so it's in this light that when um, someone dies we kind of show certain attitudes or display certain attitudes or emotions towards the whole process. If it's a good death, it has its way of representation. If it's a bad death, it has its way of representation. If the person is an oppressor, it has its way of representation. And so I decided to um, discuss what the media published about the death and of the queen in that light. Now for the method, 
it's largely qualitative, but I chose to complement it with some basic statistics to find um, grounds for the, some of the features that I observed. And the data involved publications from radio and newspaper outlets. And I chose, I purposely sampled the top um, radio and newspaper institutions in Ghana. Uh, their publications on the 9th of September. I adopted the appraisal theory, which I believe in this conference has been discussed over and over. And so I don't think I have to review that again, but I decided to focus on the attitude system, include by uh, Florian, the way affect judgment and appreciation were represented in the data. Now, concerning my findings, I've, I noticed interestingly that the affect was the least attitude that was expressed. But that was very surprising for me because our funerals are usually characterized by grave emotions and because we believe it's a way of expressing solidarity and expressing our loss. And so it is heavily characterized by activities like drumming, that drumming and we have even sorrowful dances that we engage in. But so I was expecting that to be a lot, but that didn't seem to happen. And there were more positive affects than the negative, which for me wasn't it wasn't a surprise in a way because I am I realized that the publications that related to the death had a lot more negative effects, but to the um, burial had more positive affects. And I believe that it's a conceptualization of our uh, death and burial experiences in our context. Now Judgment was the most, and for us, I would say that assessment of people's behavior formed the core of Ghanaian funerals. And the funeral serves as an opportunity to assess the core values of a person in order to preach it for others to emulate or talk about in a way of saying, ushering the deceased into a better position in afterlife. And for what was observed, there were more social esteem judgments over social sanctions. And, and the social esteem focused much more on the tenacity and while the social sanctions focused on the propriety. The appreciations were very positive. In fact, most of them were positive. And for me, I interpret that as fostering or echoing the warmth and pleasantness of the aesthetic attributes that were associated with the whole death and burial process. And most were of reactions that, till, that informs of the impact of the aesthetic features that were talked about in the data and a few in terms of um, a few were social focused on social value now so i decided to also consider the representation of the social actors and in funerals four principal social actors are identified in our context the mourners the family friends and the deceased and so well, I explored their representations in the text. Now, in our case, in the Ghanaian context, the mourners are very important to the whole process of, of the, the death and burial. And to the extent that sometimes people hire mourners to come mourn. And we we people practice the we are professional mourners who come to mourn to make the occasion a very sad one. And, and, and so 
I decided to explore the monies in context of the, by looking at the crowd and the general public that were present at the burial and the death of the queen. And in this case, to look at their representation in the data. And I noticed that they were most associated with negative emotions and these were largely unhappy emotions as example exemplified over there and but they were represented as very fickle because at a point in time they they, they can be very very negative towards the deceased and sometimes very positive towards the deceased so they did seem to not have a, a quite pleasant judgment evaluations and in terms of appreciation they they seem to exhibit uh, things that are that um were mentioned around them as if said those of impact the family was the second social actor to examine in the data and the family uh one would say are the custodian of the whole process because they initiate the and plan and determine what is to happen around um, death and burial of individuals. And in this case, I explored the, represent the representation of the royal family and the kind of attitudes that they were dis they displayed in the text. In African families, um, funerals, the family is supposed to display the most emotions that they want others to mimic. Um, but in in the presentation of the royal family in the data, they, they expressed much of their dispositions and their dispositions were happy, yes, but that was the least that could be said around them. Most of the attitudes that were expressed were the judgment kind and they had largely positive judgment, evaluative or appraisals around them. Uh, and they will say that they represent the celebrants. They they were more they were celebrating more than the morning. And so one wonders if they were actually represented sad about the whole thing. The queen is presented as the deceased, and the deceased is the one the funeral is organized for. And the funeral is meant to usher the deceased into the afterlife in our conceptualization of funerals. And the funeral not just does the ushering, but it honors and celebrates the person. So my case was to look at how the queen was attributed, giving... Um, uh, how the queen was appraised in the data. And I noticed that largely would say that she was celebrated because most of the emotions that were attributed to her were positive, um, positive, so she had positive um, affect appraisals and the judgments were also very positive and focused largely on her tenacity, right? And in terms of appreciation, they were also very positive and were targeted at their values. Now, Ghanaians in the text were presented as the friend. And in our context, a friend at a funeral is the one who's supposed to give testimonies about you. And the testimonies that friends do get do give are usually very positive and in the way everything that was presented in this light was very positive in terms of the affect, the judgment and appreciation with some examples on the screen. And the friend expresses his or her judgment or uh, evaluations about uh, the deceased behavior through the um, reflection and remembrance. And most of these were found in the data to be very positive. Um, like with some of the examples on the screen, for the want of time, I don't want to read them. 
So my conclusion is that first, I should emphasize that in our context, we say that there's a popular saying that at some point we are out of bush, in other words, when an enemy dies, um, the the kind of the opposer rejoices over the person's death. But this is not what is exemplified in the data. The data tells that Ghanaians seem to or um Ghanaians seem to have a positive attitude towards the Queen and the British institution. The Queen's death is highlighted, the Queen is highlighted with deep respect and admiration. And it, it seemed the text seemed to display great affinity and moments of solidarity with the British populace and with Britain during the death and burial of the Queen. And so I conclude that Ghanaian show no hosti hostility towards Britain to even warrant anti-colonial sentiment. And the presentation or the representation of the Queen tells our position with our former colonial master. And in, in a way, it echoes the general positive attitude in the Anglophone countries towards their former colonial masters, Britain. And therefore, we would say that, I conclude that most African, uh, the Anglophone countries seem to have positive affection towards Britain, other than the negative ones that seem to exist in the Francophone countries. Thank you. Am I still here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Minta, for your presentation on the we response reaction of uh, people in Ghana to the Queen's death. So, if do you have any questions for our presenter, our participants? Sorry, I didn't show my face, but I think yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now we can see you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just have uh, one, I just would, would like to know. Yes, we have one uh, participant raising hand here. Please go ahead first. Thanks very much. Um, that was a really uh, interesting analysis and I think very sort of sensitive to the sociocultural context. I really love the way that you contextualized it in um, yeah, the context of um, Ghanaian um, funeral traditions. So thank you very, very much for that. Um, thank you. Now, your data source seemed to be mostly um, news articles. Is that correct? Did you do any looking at um, sort of comments on news articles or social media comments on what was written? Because I, um, it might be interesting to see um, if uh, the, the attitude in those was, was different um, from what was expressed in the news articles themselves yes i suspect i suspect that to happen so that's another research i want to do and and see how that was expressed and maybe compare it to what this uh, the these radio and newspapers did yes and that's something i want to take up thank you for the suggestion Yes, I, I I agree with the, uh, the that point that we can make it more interesting by looking such as more responses from different channels of communication on Facebook or something or other media means to have to see the differences between the reactions. Yes. 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 So, uh, do you have do we have any other? Comments or questions for our presenter?
Okay. If we don't have any further questions, uh, we can stop uh, the top presentation here. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Uh, Thank talk. you, everyone. Yes. yes. And uh, may I ask if uh, the presenter of the four paper uh, is here with us? Because I uh, haven't seen the name of the user here. Please let us know if you are here. Analyzing the language variations in this paper report of uh, Trump against women in the transitivity system network. Okay. Are you here with us? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so, Assalamualaikum. Dr. Fatima. Hello, am I audible? Okay, uh, let me introduce um, your papers and um, your affiliation first. Okay, so we will now go to the four presentation uh, analyzing the language variation in news reports of crime against women through transitivity system network by Dr. Name Fatima from Nest, uh, Raspipur, Pakistan, uh, Air University, Islamabad, Pakistan. Please, uh, over to you. Okay. Okay, please let me share the first the slides. Uh, Okay, yes. We haven't seen the we haven't seen the slide. So is it uh, is my screen visible? Are the slides okay? Uh please can you confirm are the slides okay? We haven't seen the, the PowerPoint slide yet. Okay, the uh, screen is there. Not yet. Uh Can you try to share the, the, the screen again? Because this is the video of the folder, not the PowerPoint. Yes, I can, I can do it again. Yes, please. Let me know. OK, I can see the PowerPoint. Is it visible? Yes. yes. Yeah, that is. Thank you. Yes, go on. OK, let me go for the slideshow. Yeah. Is cool. it OK now? Can I start? Yes, I can. You can start now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, the um, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to uh, read my paper. Uh, my research is uh, entitled as Analyzing Language Variations in News Reports of Crime Against Women Through Transitivity System Network. Uh, basically, the objectives of my research are uh, uh, to, uh, to study the variations in the language of news reports of women's rape and murder cases, to trace any possible social biases through transitivity analysis, as transitivity analysis yields accurate data about language use that can be interpreted on several levels of functional context. The second objective which I pursued uh, during my research is to select the select and compare texts of some specific crime reports from different newspapers of both Urdu language and Pakistani English language. This comparison of different newspapers may reveal systematic differences in the ideology of newspapers revealed or concealed attitudes regarding crime, victim, and perpetrators.
Okay, the research questions which I uh, uh, investigated during the research were what do, do the transitivity choices reveal in texts selected from different newspapers about the processes of meaning making about one and the same news uh, based on theme or topic? What functional contexts are possibly identified in such texts and how do these transitivity choices represent specific ideology of different newspapers. The third question is how much can be identified through text analysis and comparison and how much is dependent upon interpretation and knowledge of the social context. In this, uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, review the uh, previous uh, works, I have uh, gone through different researches. And one of the researchers uh, conducted the research and he applied the transitivity model to find out that they competently exploit linguistic devices to physically gather the audience around them. They means here the reporters, those who report in the newspapers. Another uh, uh, researcher explored the relation between the form and function of language in the political discourse. He analyzed the speeches of Barack Obama's and Mr. Uh, John delivered during the election campaign of 2008. And he concludes that in both the speeches, the frequency of linguistic spin is very high. Some other researchers in the research the analysis of online debate analyzed an online debate using this uh, Halliday's systemic functional grammar approach. And in that they analyzed the genre, beliefs and ideologies, the social purpose of the text and the cultural and situational context and examined feed, tenor and mode and of the selected text. Systematic analysis of editorials is another research. It uh, investigates the language used in the editorial selected from the Guardian newspaper from the month of October to November 2010. He applies different tools of systemic functional grammar, including the mood system, the theme system, and the system. The researcher concludes that editorials are a bridge between the people and the government. The analysis shows that the language of editorials is reader center certain and straightforward. It also reveals that the language used in editorials is not only to attack, but to build the society. It is not only to criticize, rather to construct the society. Another research studied the textual and interpersonal differences between a news report and an editorial in the textual and interpersonal differences between a news report and an and editorial. They concluded that the written language offers a wide variety of grammatical tools to mediate an author's intended message. Now coming to the methodology, the theoretical framework which I selected for this research was the Halliday's transitivity system and Hassan's plans of narration. Both the frameworks were applied to the uh, news selected from different newspapers which are published in Pakistan. <clears throat> for reliable and valid research in the first place, quality selection of appropriate stories was essential. Secondly, to study the language variations at length, it was necessary to take one story from at least three or four newspapers. So I collected 30 stories, each from at least three electronic or printed newspapers. Out of this huge data collected from all Urdu and Pakistani English newspapers of three years, I carefully selected news stories with appropriate content as the broad area of the research was crime against women, which was further narrowed down, down to the rape and murder cases of women, following considerations were taken into account during selection. I considered that the news pertaining to the rape and murder for sure rejecting merely eve teasing, injury and beating cases, and the rape and the murder cases included all groups of women, that is girls, women, mother, wife, sister, daughter, and colleagues, oblique subordinates. With this in view, initially I collected 30 news stories from each from three different newspapers, English and Urdu newspapers of international, national and lo local stature, including Daily Dawn, The News International, The Nation, Daily Times, Pakistan Today, Express Tribune and Daily Jang. Nawai worked and Express published or sold or uploaded in Pakistan. 
Later, out of this large corpus, only 10 stories each from three newspapers, making a total of 30 were selected. The quantitative as well as qualitative research designs were used to analyze the language variations. For quantitative analysis, selected features of t-testing were adopted, and for qu qualitative analysis, the data was interpreted in textual, social, and cultural contexts. After analyzing the data quantitatively and qualitatively, it was triangulated through Hess's plans of narration and the first and second order of representation. Coming to the data analysis, uh, this uh, section describes the quantitative and qualitative analyses of the newspaper corpus containing the news reports of crime against women. The basic model exploited for analyzing language variations and meaning making in social and cultural contexts at individual and group level is Halliday's transitivity system network. However, for in-depth analysis of objectivity and subjectivity, Hassan's plans of narration were studied in the newspaper texts and the selected corpus was compared with her analysis of necessity's child. To study the role of linguistic choices in reporting and the impact of the choices of process types and participant types and their order, the frequency of process and participant types was worked out and the participant relations with respect to the characterization of the stories were studied. The participant types related to the crime-related processes were separated to establish the gender differences by finding their usage as a theme. To further triangulate the gender bias of the newspaper, the participant types such as shares were tabulated and their role as seer was compared with the imp of Hessen. The percentage of process types in different newspapers is represented graphically in the next slide. Here we have the slide which represents the uh, number of the process types, the pr percentage of the process, different process types. The process types have been indicated here in, on the horizontal level and their percentage is uh, uh, here on the vertical uh, side. Now coming to the vertical examination of the process types. In the vertical examination, I observed the frequency trend of each process type within each text and discussed them in each newspaper. In Daily Dawn, the most frequent is material newspaper, material process, and the second in frequency is verbal process. Mental and relational processes were lowest in occurrence. The average of the mental processes is 7.35, whereas the average of the relational attributive processes is 2.43. The rest of the processes, like relational identifying, behavioral and existential processes were missing in daily dawn text. This indicates that daily dawn construes the world more in terms of actions and happenings with goal at its center. Second in frequency are the verbal processes carried out by the police officials. The dominant process in daily dawn is material and amongst its related participants, the goal is dominant. Whereas the overall dominant pro uh, participant is share, which indicates that in daily dawn text, share is more pronounced as compared to the participant type related to the material proce uh, process and to be more specific, that is goal. Similar to daily dawn, the dominant process in the news international is material process which explicitly shows that it also construes the world in terms of actions and happenings and depicts the facts as they are. Verbal processes stand second with an average of 32.34. Both of them are greatly higher than the mental, relational, identifying, and relational attributive processes. The average of the mental processes is 5.38, relational identifying is 2.69, and relational attributive is 3.19. Behavioral and existentials are again missing in the News International as well. Similar to Daily Dawn and the News, the dominant process in the nation is again the material process, which is significantly higher than the verbal process. The rest, all processes except existential are there in the nation text, but in very less number. This may indicate that the nation construes the world more in terms of actions and happenings with the goal at the center. 
Similar to the other newspapers, the material process is dominant in Daily Times as well, with an average of 76.99. The occurrence of the material processes is significantly higher than the mental and the verbal processes. The average of mental process is 5.56 and that of the verbal is 17.46. Relational, behavioral, and existential processes are missing in daily times. Four mentioned facts indicates that daily times, like other newspapers, depicts the facts in terms of actions and happenings with goal at its center. Contrary to other newspapers, the dominant process in Pakistan today is verbal. Second in frequency is the material process. Mental and relational attributive processes carry 18.75 and 6.2 averages respectively. The dominance of verbal processes indicates the inclination of news agency towards quoting the other sources, saving themselves from giving any opinion or comment about the incident. This technique also implies a way of reflecting objectivity. The newspaper doesn't pass any statement from its own Rather, it is narrated what the others, the witnesses of the scene, or the crime dealer, that is the specialist, describe. Similar to all newspapers, except that of the Pakistan Today, selected for the research, Daily Jung also contains the maximum number of material processes. Some of the remaining processes are there in the text, but they are very less in number. The averages of remaining processes Relational identifying, relational attributive, and verbal processes are 5.21, 4.17, and 15.92, respectively. Mental, behavioral, and existential processes are missing in Jung text. This indicates that Daily Jung depicts the news stories related to crime against women in terms of actions and happenings with goal at the center. It also reflects the objectivity of the news reporters as the newspaper depicts the facts as they are. The process percentage in each text reveals the difference in ideology of the selected newspapers. In some of the processes, there are significant differences in three texts, and at times there are less significant differences. Now, the other way of examining the process types is horizontal. In horizontal examination, comparative percentages of the process types in the newspaper text were taken into account. And on the basis of number, that is frequency of that particular process type, the newspapers were sorted in descending order and presented in the line and graph. Then the material processes uh, uh, are, uh, the average number of the material processes indicates the newspapers containing maximum number of material processes. This shows that daily times text contains maximum number of uh, material processes Second in frequency is Daily Jung, and then comes the Nation, the News International, and then the Daily Dawn, and Pakistan Today stands last as it contains the minimum number of material processes. Higher number of material processes indicates more objectivity in terms of the reality, that is depicting the facts as they are. It reveals the report, that reporter or correspondent has depicted the events he was sure about and has endorsed only the confirmed facts. On the scale of objectivity, the newspapers follow the sequence Daily Times, Daily Jung, The Nation, The News International, Daily Dawn, and Pakistan Today. Coming to the mental processes, the average of the mental processes used in all the newspapers indicates that the number of mental processes are sorted out from the largest to the smallest. Pakistan today stands highest in mental processes, containing significantly more occurrences than the other newspapers. The other newspapers ranging from daily dawn to the, to the nation have less significant differences further marking significant differences with respect to daily junk, which has no mental process in it. This indicates that Pakistan today stands highest on the scale of subjectivity and lowest on the scale of objectivity. Relational process can either be identifying or attributive. They have the averages of 5.21 in daily junk and 4.11 in the nation and 2.69 in the news international. They are totally missing in Daily Dawn, Daily Times, and Pakistan today. 
Relational processes with respect to the, their frequency range from the largest to smallest sequences in newspapers as Pakistan Today, Daily Jang, the, the Nation, The News, Daily Dawn, and Daily Times. The frequency of the relational attributive processes is almost equal in Daily Jang and the Nation, The News International, and Daily Dawn, whereas Great, a uh, great, uh, great difference in the number of relational attributive processes is found in Pakistan today and daily times. Verbal processes are very important in the news reporting, and the news agencies tend to quote other sources, saving themselves from giving any opinion or comment about the incident. Is predominantly used by the Daily Dawn in Pakistan today, the frequency-wise sequence of the rest of the newspapers in descending order is the news, the nation, Daily Times, Daily Jung. This may also indicate the objectivity range. The more the other shares are involved in the news reports, the more ob objective the text is. The second uh, strand of transitivity is participant types to map the overall uh, to map out the overall impact of the role assigned to different participants by different newspapers. I calculated the average of the percentage of different participant types from the text. The graphical representation is shown on the slide. These are different uh, uh, on the horizontal line. There are different participants. Uh, types of the participants and on the vertical lines newspapers have been indicated so this is the uh, there is a graph uh, which indicates that different uh, this is the uh, 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 these are the newspapers so different colors indicate the different newspapers coming to the uh, comparison of the participants in the case of related to the material processes there are actor and the goal and the actor and the goal, the frequencies of the actor and the goal are, have been compared, and that is shown on the slide in the form of the graph. So this is the graph, and it indicates that uh, one process, that is goal, is higher frequency of goal in all the newspapers or in the maximum newspapers is higher as compared to the actor. Okay. Uh, the comparison shows that the number of goal is higher than that of actor in all the texts, which concludes that the done upon is more talked about in all the texts as compared to the doer. Role of share in the newspapers, thorough study of all the texts reveals that characterization of all the stories mainly consists of three categories, that is the culprit, victim, and the police officials. The frequency of these three categories as actor and goal with reference to crime-related processes indicates that in the major or independent clauses, uh, minor or uh, subordinate clauses, including those which are part of verbiage, victim has been presented as goal and alleged culprit as actor. The police officials are predominantly shares the graphical representation of the shares in all the newspapers is shown through the graph. Okay, now based on the uh, frequencies of the mental, material, and the verbal processes, an objectivity scale was developed. Material and verbal processes indicate objectivity, whereas mental process indicated subjectivity. So it was calculated in the reverse order. To conclude the mental processes in measuring objectivity, the order of the newspaper set for mental processes was reversed, which marked the reversed subjectivity, that is objectivity. The mean of the three aspects was calculated. Considering material, mental, and verbal processes, a scale was developed in which initially 20 marks were, were awarded to the lowest position holder newspapers, and 20 marks were further added by each increase in the position. Then their average was calculated to find out the objectivity of the newspapers. So the graph, which is on the next slide, it shows the scale of the objectivity of different newspapers. So this is the percentage which was finally calculated on the basis of the uh, these uh, three processes uh, to uh, um, um, figure out the scale, objectivity scale. 
again the same G it's the same thing was uh, uh, further uh, confirmed uh, with the help of by applying the plans of narration uh, uh, first i will explain the plan of narration a little bit narration is a significant feature of every discourse various models of narration applied to different discourses reveal multiple styles and mindsets embedded inside to represent different ideologies the outlook of the writer in case of my research reporter uh, correspondent reflects reporter's objectivity or subjectivity. One of such models has been best exploited by Hassan while analyzing Necessity's child. He has identified two narrators, Rodney and Impartial Chronicler. The latter is omniscient about the former. According to her, subjective narration features first person pre uh, pronominals reference to the main pro protagonist and other characters in relation with him. In present discourse sample, first person pronominals are missing because the main protagonist of each text is victim, either the murdered or the raped, who neither on the first order of representation nor on the second order of representation can use the first person pronominal. They are talked about in terms of reality or cognition or verbal either by the police officials or the family members or neighbors or residents of the locality where the incident happened. Use of third person pronominal reflects that the whole discourse is built on objective plan of narration. The aforesaid narrators are not that omniscient about the victims as the imp chronicler about, is about, the, about Rodney. One possible reason for this is the difference of the depth between the two types of narrations, fictive having a well-planned and sufficiently deliberated language and the normal reporting comprising day-to-day -day language. Secondly, the absence of subjectivity indicates that the corresponding, a correspondent or reporter of dailies published in Pakistan do not show any sympathy while narrating news of crime against women. Thirdly, it may be because of reluctance to openly talk about on such issues. This kind of reporting lacks in subjectivity, emotions, feelings, and sentiments. The Pakistani reporters have not tried to reflect how the sentiments of the raped or to be murdered women are heard, what kind of life they have to live, how do they run their home or family without any reasonable financial support or the male members' moral support. On the objective plan of narration, there is very less direct representation and that too through the mouthpiece of police officials. There is significant direct representation either by the victims or the culprit with the third person pronominal, but the third person does not refer to victim herself. Rather, the victim and the alleged culprit have reported about each other, which is technically objective as narrated by the others here, but content-wise, it is subjective because both anti-groups have tried to justify their own acts and blame the other for the wrongdoing. That's it from my side. These are some of the references which were used uh, uh, for the research. Uh, now, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, thank you very much, Dr. V. Uh, Fatima, for the presentation. And uh, our participant, do you have any question for her? Please, uh, if you have any points to discuss or any comment or feedback on the presentation, go ahead, please. Yes. Yes, please. Please, go ahead. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, that, that was quite interesting. Um, I actually, there's a, a student in my department who's doing a similar study um, on South African news reports um, of gender-based violence, uh, but using appraisal rather than transitivity. Um, and so one thing I'm very interested in is the sort of cultural variation between um, one sociocultural context and another when it comes to handling of these cases. And um, when, when you look at your findings, what would you say are um, the main sort of reflections of the sociocultural context of Pakistan in them? Um, or which of your findings you think reflects that the most, um, the, the sociocultural context of the country? 
Okay, these are basically uh, uh, if we see there are the cultural differences as well as the ideological concerns are there. If the policy is uh, policy of the newspaper is there, then the reporters uh, can go uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, can go to use a very straightforward expressions or can depict the facts in a straightforward way. But they have to manipulate the language in order to make it corresponding to the policy of the news agencies and in order to make it corresponding to the uh, culture. Uh, how to what extent the their facts or their descriptions are acceptable by uh, for the audience, acceptable for the uh, newspaper readers. So they have to take care of this. And uh, uh, probably that is the reason, but uh, there are some of the reflections which are like they lack um, objectivity or uh, they are when they are referring to others, uh, it means they are trying to authenticate the uh, facts through the uh, mouths of the other people, those who are present there. So uh, there is a mixed opinion about it. You, we cannot say that every thing which is uh, which has been declared as objective it is truly objective it, there may be the subjective aspect of that one uh, also i hope i have uh, answered your question thanks very much um i do have one additional question um but i don't know yeah. um might be better to give others a chance to ask yes yes please it's fine oh you, you mean i may ask Yes, yes, please ask. Okay, certainly. Um, all right, thank you. Um, well, this, I guess, is more of a comment than a question, but um, maybe we can form it into a question. Um, yeah, I, I would have been very interested to see um, more about the participants and um, particularly looking at who's being um, put in actor position, who is being put in goal position, um, when do um, police and the woman and the culprits appear in those positions? I mean, you did include that, I think, with Sayers, but um, I think looking at um, the other participants as well would be very interesting. Um, so I wondered if you um, found any um, particular patterns in um, participants to mental processes and material processes, for instance. Okay, I uh, sorted out the participants. I selected three participants on the basis of the uh, frequencies uh, which were uh, found there in the data. In the data, mostly the participants were uh, uh, categorized into three categories. One was the culprit, the other one was the victim, and the third one was the police offici officials. Uh, most, of the uh, most of the police officials were found in the, uh, uh, as sayers. So uh, they uh, played the role of the seer. The uh, all the uh, verbal processes were linked up with that, and mostly the police officials, the commissioners, the uh, uh, different designations of the police, and the government reps, etc. They were represented as the seer. So I categorized. I made one group there, and the victims were mostly silent, and they were represented as a goal. And the uh, uh, the third category was the actors, that is the wrongdoers were presented as the actors. They were there in the, uh, uh, the actors were also present there in uh, as sayers, but that number was less as compared to the police officials. So on the basis of the different frequencies, I assigned uh, different roles to uh, these three categories, actor, goal, and share. That's why I have shown the uh, graphical representation of the comparison of uh, the frequencies in different newspapers. So the rest of the participants were very less in number. So uh, that was uh, the analysis or the comparison was not possible for that uh, sake. And these were the three main characters. That's why I included it in the category of the characterization and I analyzed them accordingly. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tima and uh, Ian, for interesting discussion. And I'm particularly interested in the, the I just wonder whether they have the visual elements incorporated into the newspaper and how would it be 
we look at the visual element together with the textual element about the stories. Yes. I didn't consider yeah. the visual elements. I just focused on the language. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so I limited. Uh, the, that was the limitation of the study. Yes. yes. Thank you very much for your presentation. And thank you everyone for joining this session this afternoon. And uh, it's time for us to stop our session here. Uh, so hope you enjoy the, the plenary uh, session um, very soon later. Okay, see you. Thank you very much, everyone.